So kinematic simulation is one where it has just one degree of freedom. Uh, it has just zero degree of freedom. Okay. So the model that you build will have zero degree of freedom, and it is a basically uh, it's basically a pure geometric study to analyze the forces such as position, velocity, and acceleration of the entities in the mechanism. So here the forces will be calculated as a consequence of motion, which is basically a function of time. And the non uh, the nonlinear algebraic equations they are solved by the Newton Raphson method in the background by the solver, and the resulting solution will be robust in nature. So here applications using this kinematic uh, simulation will be a uh, robot design or a cam profile design, etc. All these fall under the kinematic simulation. So when you build a model and when you say check model before running the simulation, you can uh, get a report of how many uh, DOFs are there in the model and the ones with zero degree of freedom, they fall under the kinematic simulation. Okay. Now moving on to the dynamic simulation. So dynamic simulation is basically the study of motion of a system as a consequence of applied forces and inertia forces. Okay. So that's the definition for dynamic simulation. So it is always applicable to models with one or more degrees of freedom. So here the degree of freedom should be greater than zero. So it can be one or more. And in dynamic simulation, the forces applied, they'll affect the accelerations. And these accelerations will be integrated to get the velocities and the velocities will be in turn uh, integrated to get displacements. So after running a dynamic simulation, you can request for either velocity, acceleration or displacements. Okay, and here are some of the applications what I can mention is about the piston dynamics or the vehicle dynamics. They need to use the dynamic simulation. Now moving on to the static simulation. So you know, uh, static means rest. So it is basically the study of equilibrium conditions of a system at rest. So in this simulation, the system velocities and the accelerations are considered zero. And a static force balance problem will be solved by the solver. So the applications here, you can consider uh, the simulation of the forces on a system at rest. For example, a model of an apartment or uh, a static stone. So you can, um, all these examples, they come under static simulation. And now uh, moving on to the quasi-static simulation. So quasi means almost and static means at rest. So basically the it's a study of equ uh, equilibrium conditions of slowly moving system. So in this type of simulation, the forces are a function of time and velocity. Uh, sorry, the forces, the forces will be a function of time and the velocity or the inertia effects will be negligible. Okay. And the governing equations will be algebraic in nature. And some of the applications, uh, popular applications using quasi static simulation are the suspension design analysis and the stability analysis. And we have some of the steady state simulations. So all these can be done using the quasi static simulation. And lastly, we have the linear simulation. So if you are in, the, if you know something about the NVH, uh, NVH domain, then you'll be familiar with uh, linear simulation. So it is basically the study of vibration modes of a system at any operating point. So it involves evaluation of the transfer function of a system at any specified operating point. So this solution, uh, the way how uh, the solution is computed is divided into three, uh, two steps. The first step is to linearize the equations of motion at a point. And the second step is the eigenvalue problem will be solved to obtain the mode shapes and the frequencies of the system. So as I mentioned earlier, the applications here is the stability analysis or it is widely used in NVH analysis. Okay, so that brings you to the end of this presentation. So I'm now open for any questions from your end.